Hey everybody, welcome back to Spoon FPV. So today is going to be the first part in what's likely going to be a mini series about cameras for mini quads and wings and like general FPV use. So the first thing I want to go over is the different cameras that are out there and the ones that I've used and their different features and let's just get into it. Alright, so let's move from left to right here. So uh, this line right here is pretty much all the cameras that I have I use for my uh, FPV in the past. This is a board camera um, and the reason I'm showing this is because it has the Sony SuperHad 600 TV line sensor in it. And this was, you know, top of the line, state of the art, like, you know, two years ago when I started flying, like the, the board camera. And this is now kind of the top of the, well these two are kind of top of the line state of the art um, cameras and uh, for FPV and they have the same sensor in it. The Sony SuperHad 600 TPL uh, sensor. It's, it's, it does a really good job of light handling and CCD versus CMOS. Um, CCD does a what they call a, uh, a global shutter so it captures the entire uh, the entire image at once so you get a lot less uh, motion blur um, so like, a, uh, like the camera that I'm using right now uh, to film this with is a CMOS sensor and it will capture uh, a line, a line, a line, a line um, and, the, and it'll interlace them so you, you've heard 1080i that means it's interlaced uh, but what that means is like for fast moving stuff that you know this line and this line like next to it were captured at different uh, points in time and you get this kind of like uh, the blurry mush that you see um, when things move relatively quickly so that's why a lot of guys re prefer um, CCD versus uh, CMOS but um, and CMOS can be done for a lot less expensive so you have cheap cheap CMOS cameras are total crap for FPV now there are some good CMOS cameras out there that I'm not showing here like the uh, well I did my video on I have this sitting here the the night eagle which you can't really see in there that's a that's a good CMOS camera um, that's really good for uh, low light handling check that video out I'll put a link up in the corner um, and the there's other CMOS cameras like the uh, Runcam Eagle, and they do a lot better. They can do a lot better um, global, uh, uh, like wide dynamic range and image processing, and you get like a, a nicer to look at image. But there's still there's a lot more processing that goes on with those. So they, they there's a little bit of a lag, and there's some kind of argument over whether the lag, the the extra latency, really affects you as a pilot or not. Um, some of the top guys say yes. Um, for me, I'm basically like, okay, if there's like, you know, a, a 50 millisecond difference, like I'm going to take, uh, you know, I'm going to take every advantage that I can have. So I'm going to go with, you know, the, the CCD versus the, the CMOS camera. So that's why like everything here is um, CCD that I'm showing. Um, so this is a, with the exception of these two, and we'll talk about those a little bit later. So this is the kind of the camera that, that started the the revolution the 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 grandfather of of these guys here it's the hs 1177 um kind of the the original and what they did is they kind of like took this one stacked it up and made it take a wider voltage input range where you could actually because this one was limited to five volts you could actually put in um a 4s setup on that um, and then all the all of these now will take a 4s direct input this is the uh, Sky Plus. It was basically this guy in a box with the 4S input. Uh, you know, if you have one, eh, you know, they're, they're decent cameras, but uh, they're not, they're kind of a little big and a little bit heavy uh, for FPV now. So this is the Runcamp Swift, which is exactly the same as the uh, Fox Ear. Well, okay, it's not fair to say they're exactly the same. Okay, so the Runcam Swift and the Foxier HS1177 are basically identical as far as performance goes. The, I, the reason I have Runcams is because instead of Foxier's uh, is because I, I like their, um, their direct out of the box uh, settings that they use. And the Runcam seems to kind of like, th and this isn't a sponsored uh, ad by Runcam. I wish it was, but it's not. <laughs> um, Runcam seems to kind of listen to the FPV community. So if I take uh, one of these apart 
uh, inside the sensor. They have glued the sensor down, and the the, the actual camera settings in this are what uh, you know Chad Novak and and those guys use. So you know that's that's why I like Runcam because out of the box, like I don't really have to fiddle with them other than to put my name on it. So. But this and an 1177 are are pretty much identical. This one, the case is a little bit narrower than 1177. Um, and this is the Swift 2, which is identical to in performance pretty much to the 11, uh, the 1190, the Foxy 1190. And this one take okay so. Back to the Swift. This one takes up to 17 bolts, which is 4S. And a lot of guys now are flying, uh, you know, 5 and 6S. Well, this one will take a 35 to 36 volt. So, you know, I, is 30, 24 volt is uh, 6S. So, you know, this is like, this will take an 8 cell um, direct input. So, and, and it has an on screen display. If you don't want to run a, uh, like an OSD or something like you can buy a camera with one in it and the difference between these and this one and this one's like four dollars so I mean it's definitely worth it to get the Swift 2 uh, for that and you know Fox here kind of was the first to do it but with their arrow but they really in my opinion they uh, you know I, I guess it was kind of innovative but they they kind of really screwed it up they basically overwrote your name and it wasn't live um, so the, you would, you would get a voltage for like a snapshot in time. So, you know, if you would get a voltage right before you throttle punch and then you back off and you get another voltage, like right after you backed off and you'd see that your, your voltage was like 15 volts, but like you missed that sag down to like 13 volts in the middle there that really tells you your, your battery is suffering. So it's really important to have kind of a, a live voltage feedback in your OSD and the, the Swift 2 and the Foxier 1190, they both provide that. And the, uh, this one is, you know, five to 36 volts, the 1190 is five to 35 volts, but basically they're, they're identical. And this is the Runcam Swift Mini. So the Swift Mini, is you know identical uh, to the to the Swift, except for this one has a five to thirty six volt uh, input range uh, as well, but they're using the same sensor. They have the same um, you know they're 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 all the Sony Super had uh, six hundred TV line. So this one's just a little bit smaller. So if you're running a uh, a lot of guys are are building the the three inch quads and smaller X frames and if if space is a premium this is kind of a, a an interesting I I think this is a very good choice for a premium space quad. Now let's weigh let's weigh a couple of these because as I pick this one up I'm noticing that it's pretty heavy. So we'll just go down the line. We have the the old style board camera here, 13.8 grams. We have this guy, which has a little bit of hot glue on it, so it's 14.2. Uh, the, the and I called this a, a 1177 before. This is 1177M, but uh, this was kind of, you know, whatever. So this is the Sky Plus, we're 17.4 grams. We have the Swift, which is 10.4 grams, the lightest of the group here. Um, we have the Swift Mini, which is 11.6 grams. And we have the Swift 2, which is 12.6 uh, grams. So, and then we have things like the, the actual uh, run cam, the V1. So we're, what, 40 grams on that. I think the V2 is like 52 grams. Um, I, this is a GoPro, uh, 72 point, or 74.2 grams. So a lot of guys will try and fly through these, and we talked about latency before. These actually have like, you know, 500 uh, milliseconds of latency. Like it's like half a second, and it, it's it's terrible to fly. Like once you've once you've flown a CCD camera or like something that's like live feed, and some guys will fly through. Not this GoPro, but like the the Hero Four or whatever. Um, but the the latency on those is just killer. So these are these are great for um, filming. Um, if you want to record your video because you get that like nice HD video that you see in some of my videos and these are these are actually what I look through when I'm flying so I guess that's it about cameras other than you know I'm going to talk about lenses in another video but I, I buy all my cameras with a um, 
uh, with a not with an IR filter in them because the, they're daytime only. So if you're if you're looking for a nighttime only rig, you should probably look at a non IR filtered camera, or you can just get a uh, a non IR filtered lens um, because the filter. Um, I guess it depends on the camera, so that's not really fair to say. But some okay, so. There is a sensor inside here. I'll open this one up because I don't care about it anymore. So there's a sensor inside of these. Uh, you see the the sensor. I don't know. Can you see it there? There's a sensor inside of there. And then some some cameras will put the IR filtering on the back of the lens here, which provides you a lot more uh, flexibility. And some some cameras will put the IR filter on the actual image sensor inside of there, which basically means that it's IR filtered all the time or um, but if you get one, so I, I buy all mine IR filtered anyhow, because I, I like the way that it looks during the day. Um, and it's a, it's a more natural type of light, but I think that's pretty much all you need to know in order to select, select an FBV camera, uh, other than your field of view, which I'm going to go over in a different video. So hopefully you enjoyed this. And uh, thanks for all those that like and subscribe my videos. If you haven't, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. You know, I'll, I'll put a link up there, and I'll put some other videos down the side for you to for you to check out if you if you haven't already checked out some other stuff on my channel. So, thanks for watching.